All right, this video is on more sequence uh, convergence. So the directions for most of the problems we're going to do will say show whether the sequence converges or diverges. If it converges, uh, find its limit. And so last video we were talking about uh, sequences where you had fractions and all of the function types were the same. So it was all power functions or all exponential functions. Uh, we're going to start looking at what happens when we mix function types. So here we've got a trigonometric function and a power function. So we've got cosine n over n squared. So if we think about what happens as n approaches infinity, cosine n uh, flips between or has random values between 1 and negative 1. n squared goes to infinity. So if we think about like n being some large number like 10 billion or 10 billion squared or something even bigger than that, if I were to plug in 10 billion I don't know what cosine of 10 billion is, but I do know it's between 1 and negative 1. And then 10 billion squared I know is very, very large. So logically, this should be approaching 0. And so I know that the top is between 1 and negative 1, and the bottom is going to infinity. And so basically what we've said out loud is that the top is between 1 and negative 1. And so the sequence itself is between negative 1 over n squared and 1 over n squared. And the idea is that since negative 1 over n squared approaches 0 and 1 over n squared approaches 0, if the original sequence is between those, then the original sequence also goes to 0. So a n converges to 0. And this idea is an idea from calc 1 called the squeeze theorem. And so we say a n converges to 0 by the squeeze theorem, and this is our informal proof that that's the case. Um, let's state the squeeze theorem. So we're going to do several uh, theorems uh, that are true in general in this uh, video, and I'll do those in purple. So the squeeze theorem for sequences says basically exactly what we just said. And it says that if a n is between b n and c n, okay, so for all n greater than or equal to n naught or n zero, so basically that just means eventually this needs to be true. So if uh, a n is between b n and c n, and the limit as n goes to infinity of bn is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of cn, and that's equal to some number l, then the limit as n approaches infinity of an is equal to l. So if an is between bn and cn, and then the limits of bn and cn are both some number l, then an goes to that number as well. Uh, that's easy to think of with a picture, and so technically sequences are discrete dots, but we're, it, it's easier to think of it as though it's a continuous curve, so I'm going to draw this as a continuous curve. Um, so the idea is, let's say bn looks like this, and so bn is converging to some number l, uh, a n, I'm sorry, C n is larger than that, and so it's also converging to some number L, to the same number L. Then A n is between those, and so we don't know what A n looks like, but A n is bouncing maybe, or maybe it's not bouncing, but it's always between those. And so if these two, B n and C n, both converge to the same number, then A n literally gets squeezed in between those and has to go to the same number L. And so graphically, it's easy to think about with a smooth curve. If it was a bunch of discrete dots, it's the same argument, just a little bit harder to visualize. Um, so again, we're using relatively informal notation, but remember that this notation, when I'm writing that arrow, that is the same thing as saying the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 over n squared 
is equal to zero and same thing with one over n squared. So that's an easy example of the squeeze theorem. You'll see some more examples in the uh, homework. So I wanna talk for a minute about um, sequences that are not uh, always positive. And in particular, I wanna talk about alternating sequences. So an alternating sequence is one that flips sign every term. So one term is negative, the next term is positive, the next term is negative, and the next term is positive. Um, in particular, in those sequences, we're going to be looking at the absolute value of the sequence. And so I want to talk about a sequence AN that is sometimes positive and sometimes negative. Right, you know what, actually, let's just say we have some sequence AN. Okay, and so if you talk about the absolute value of AN, then that simply means that all of the terms are positive or they're zero, um, that we would make any negative term in AN positive. We would keep all the terms in AN that are already positive. We would keep those positive. Okay, so because of that, we know that this must be true, that every term in the sequence AN, if it's positive already, it's equal to the absolute value. If it's negative, then it's less than that. Okay, and then also this must be true. So negative absolute value of AN has to be less than or equal to AN. So if the term is positive, then obviously the negative version of that is smaller. If the term is negative, then the absolute value is positive and that negative one in front of it would make it the same thing. And so for instance, if this was, if one of the terms here was negative three, this is negative absolute value of negative three, which would actually equal negative three. In any case, it's smaller than that. And so we know automatically for any sequence an, an is between its absolute value and the negative of its absolute value. Okay, so let's suppose that we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of an is zero. Then automatically, the limit as n goes to infinity of negative absolute value of an, we could factor the negative out and prove that then that also goes to zero. Okay, so if this first statement is true, then that automatically means the second statement is true. So if we know the first statement there, the second statement is true. This statement up here is always true no matter what. Okay, so this is always true. So knowing this statement that I'm circling, the other two statements are automatically true, which means this squeeze theorem holds. So this is a statement that we're going to make that follows immediately from the squeeze theorem. And in math, we can call the statements like that a corollary. So a, one corollary to the squeeze theorem is that for any sequence, if the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of an is equal to zero, then the limit as n goes to infinity of an is equal to zero. And to make that infinity a little bit clearer, but um, this follows from above. So if we know the statement that I'm circling, we automatically know all of the other conditions of the squeeze theorem because this part is true for every sequence. And if the limit of the absolute value is zero, the limit of the negative absolute value is also zero. That means the squeeze theorem holds, and so an also has to go to zero. Okay, so let's go back to some more practice problems where we're trying to show whether the sequence converges or diverges. If we're looking at an alternating sequence, typically the way we try to determine its limit is we start by looking at its absolute value. So we say, okay, the absolute value of a n here is n over 5n squared plus 7. And just as a quick side note, we're going to have, there's going to be a separate video about absolute value in the prerequisite material part of the YouTube channel. 
So in the prereq, man, if I could spell that, prereq material for sequences, I'm going to have an absolute value video up by the end of the week. Um, it may be already up by the time you're watching this. It would be worth looking at that because that's sometimes a little bit confusing. So, so you will want to watch the video on absolute value. Anyway, when we take the absolute value of this sequence, we get n over 5n squared plus 7. That is now like the ones in the first video. Well, the biggest term on top is n. The biggest term on bottom is 5n squared. So the limits of those two expressions are the same. That means that this approaches 1 over 5n, which goes to 0. Since the absolute value of a n approaches 0, then a n approaches 0 by the corollary to the squeeze theorem. And so this is a quick, uh, quick explanation as to why the, this sequence goes to 0. Okay, so then let's look at if we have a n equals negative 1 to the n times 6n over the square root of n squared plus 17. All right, so we'll start by taking the absolute value. The absolute value of a n is 6n over the square root of n squared plus 17. This is all power functions, so we'll say the dominant term on top is the only term on top, that's 6n. The dominant term on bottom is the square root of n squared. That gets us 6n over n, which is 6. So the absolute value of a n approaches 6. Look closely back at what this corollary says. So I want you to pause the video and answer a question. So this corollary says that if the limit of the absolute value goes to zero, then a n goes to zero. What does it say about when the limit of the absolute value goes to six? Okay, so think closely about what that corollary is saying. What does it tell you when the absolute value goes to six? Okay, and so it doesn't actually say anything about that. Um, but what we can think of is if we think of positive values of n that are very, very large. If n is a very, very large number, like n approaching infinity, so maybe 10 billion, 10 billion is an even number. The negative one to the 10 billionth is positive one, but the rest of that expression is basically six. It's not exactly six, but it's very, very close to six. So for a sub 10 billion, we're getting a number very, very close to positive six. At 10 billion and 1, negative 1 to the 10 billion and 1 is negative 1. The rest of that is basically 6, so we're getting a number very, very close to negative 6. That means the sequence a n diverges because it alternates from very close to 6 to very close to negative six. So very close to six to very close to negative six for large n. Okay, so we've got uh, on the first one, because the absolute value went to zero, the sequence also went to zero. On number three, the absolute value goes to 6. That does not automatically mean that the sequence diverges, but when it's alternating from 6 to negative 6, that is diverging because it's not approaching a single number. Okay, I want to put one more practice problem up and let you guys try this problem. So let's say we have negative 1 to the n times uh, 8n over, oh, we'll make it 8n squared, over 3 minus 5n squared. So pause the video, try this problem, and check it with me in just a couple minutes. Okay, so on this problem, we should start by looking at the absolute value of an. That in this case is 8n squared over negative 3 minus 5n squared. 
If you're not sure why you have a negative on this problem, that would be a good idea to watch the absolute value video that I'll post soon. Um, when you get this, that then is equal to 8n squared over 5n squared minus 3. That approaches 8n squared over 5n squared, which approaches 8 fifths. The original sequence diverges because it alternates eight fifths or near eight fifths to negative eight fifths in the long run. So for large n. Okay, so that's it for this video. We'll continue with more sequence proofs in the next video. Thanks for watching.